You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. Spent a lot of time this week talking about concerns with LSU's secondary, uh, certainly the LSU offense and just how proficient I think they're going to be this year. And I think LSU's offense is going to be very good this year. One of the matchups that we haven't spend, uh, spent a lot of time talking about yet that I think we need to, at, outside of the Mason Smith absence, is the LSU defensive front against the Florida State offensive line. One thing to be very aware of with Florida State's offensive line, and look, every, every game week, every program has their game notes. It's a packet. Yes, they still print game notes. It's a packet that sports information puts out. It's everything you need to know about a team in a given week. I got Florida State's right here, and I got LSU's right here. Some game notes. Game notes. So it's just a ton of info. Everything you need to know from, you know, numbers. No, Florida State's winning percentage since 1976, the fourth highest in the nation, 73.9 percent. Says it right there. Take them at their word. You get my point. Well, in their game notes, one of the first things they point. Uh, by the way, I don't. Did you know this? Muse, did you know this? Florida State, their all-time record games in Orlando. You aware of it? I actually am aware of it. Because uh, you looked at the game notes? No, because somebody asked Mike Norvell about it in one of his press conferences this week. They're 10-0-2. Yep, undefeated. They have never lost a game in Orlando. Florida State um, won nine straight since that 17-17 to tie with Georgia in the 1984 Citrus Bowl. Says great it, game. Says it right there. You weren't even born. It's a great um, game. Fantastic. You watch it on YouTube? Hard fought by both squads. Ties are stupid. Anyway, in the notes... Florida, Florida State Sports Information points out the Seminoles' offensive line is by far the most experienced group in the country as they enter the season with a nation's best 307 games played and 214 combined starts, ranking 41 games played and 35 starts ahead of the next closest team nationally. Nine different offensive linemen have started at least one collegiate game and seven different offensive linemen on the 2023 squad have made at least 20 collegiate starts. Who? Earlier this week, Alex Atkins, the Florida State offensive line coach, who, by the way, is a great offensive line coach. LSU tried to hire him two years ago, if you recall, and Florida State ponied up the money to keep him. This was Alex Atkins at the beginning of this week talking about his offensive line. You know, we got some, some, some experience and guys that put in a lot of time and reps, but also their understanding of the of the little nuances that you might quite can't show in practice, something that might come up in a scheme, they've showed the ability to kind of process that information, execute it. I think those guys, you know, they've been through it. They've, they've become a lot closer. And, um, you know, so I believe in their ability to not only respond if something happens, but also to adapt and improvise if there's something out there that we haven't showed them or, or been able to rep quite a few times. They are a veteran. Uh, Robert Scott, their left tackle has made 29 career starts. Casey Roddick, their left guard, has made 30 career starts. Their center, Maurice Smith, has started 29 games. Right guard, Demetri Emanuel, has started 38 games. These are starts, by the way. And right tackle, Jeremiah Byers, 30 career starts. They have played a ton of football. Now, it is also worth noting that Casey Roddick, their left guard, is a Colorado transfer. And Jeremiah Byers, the right tackle, is a UTEP transfer. So a couple of guys there that have played a lot of football, but not exactly played the level of football that you'd be accustomed to, and certainly not what you're going to see on Sunday night at Camping World Stadium against the LSU defensive front. But they played a lot of games, okay? And it's interesting because in this game a year ago, and I know we keep going back to it, but in so many instances going back to a year ago is an illustration of just how different things are. Florida State ran the ball 38 times a year ago for 132 yards. They averaged 3.5 yards per carry. LSU completely bottled up Trey Benson. So LSU's defensive front did a really, really good job in run defense. What LSU's defensive front did a pretty terrible job of doing is pressures. 
no sacks, and just two tackles for loss. As a result, Jordan Travis and Florida State were 11 of 17 on third down. They were 9 of 10 in the first half. LSU couldn't get off the field because Florida State just kept converting third downs because LSU couldn't pressure Jordan Travis or get him on the ground. That's got to change this year. Now, the interesting question is, is LSU able to do that without Mason Smith. Look, Makai Wingo met with reporters earlier this week and talked about facing Florida State without number zero right in the middle. I'll tell you, I'm, it's easier to know that he's not playing now than he goes down in the first quarter. So, But, you know, we have guys like Jalen Lee, Jacoby and Guillory, Jordan Jefferson that's, that's really stepped up to the plate. And I think those guys will be able to fill the void. And, you know, as, as a team, we're just going to rally around each other and, you know, try to put our best product on film. I love the point he made that it's easier knowing now he's not going to be there. Because you can game plan. I mean, LSU will have had two weeks of game planning without Mason Smith knowing he's not going to play. It is dramatically different than, oh crap, this guy you built a game plan around is now gone and the math changes completely. So that's a very good point by Makai Wingo. But he also pointed out, and he started naming some of those transfers. And you know that's something Matt House talked about as well when we got to talk to him in fall camp or these transfers. And I'm going to illustrate this point in a minute, but here was Matt House. I've been pleased at the, the buy-in there. Two, I've, I've been pleased with the competition and depth it's brought. Excited about, you know, Jordan. We didn't get a chance to see him in the spring. He's done a nice job. Paris has done a nice job. Jalen Lee has gotten a lot better over the course of the summer. So I would tell you that they bring competition and depth. So remember, we talked about Florida State's experience. 307 games played. 214 career starts. Nine different offensive linemen have started a game at or for Florida State. Phil Steele, by the way, in his positional rankings, has Florida State's offensive line the third best offensive line in all of college football this year. So this is a massive test. But while Florida State's offensive line has a ton of experience, they don't exactly have top-tier talent. Of the guys we just mentioned, two of the, t of the starters who played a lot are transfers, and none of them are projected top two-day draft picks in, in the NFL. Like, all of them could be day three or priority free agent. To say it another way, there's no Will Campbell. There's no Emory Jones. There's no Joe Alt, who Brian Kelly recruited to Notre Dame, who's going to be a top 10 draft pick this year. They don't have that super stud on that offensive line. they got a lot of guys who played a lot of football. And so then you look at LSU's defensive line and how it plays out. Makai Wingo's played in 25 games. Guillory's played in 26 games. Jordan Jefferson's played in 42 career games. Jalen Lee's played in 25. When you look at the edges, Ovia Gofu's played in 45 games. Savion Jones played in 25 games. If you go beyond that, Paris Shand and Braden Swinson, who will probably be rotating in, Shand has played in 24 games. Swinson's played in 30 games. So you've got, uh, uh, you've got just in your with your starters, if you're just looking at Wingo, Guillory, Agofu, and Jones, you've got 121 games played and 41 career starts among them. My point is, Florida State's offensive line is very veteran. Played a ton of games together. No, like the undeniable, well, not together, because two of the guys are transfers, but they played a ton of, of football. But you don't have the superstar talent. On the flip side, LSU's defensive line is basically the same. A bunch of veteran dudes who played a ton of football. So where's the X factor? Well, it's Makai Wingo and Harold Perkins. Wingo was an All-American last year, and Harold Perkins was a freshman All-American and a guy that is everybody's pick to be the SEC Defensive Player of the Year. He's got to go be a game changer. The thing you did not have in this game a year ago, as I said, no sacks and two tackles for loss against Florida State last year. A game where Harold Perkins barely saw the field. Harold per look. And you had B.J. Ojolari. You had Ali Gay. You had guys that could rush the passer and, and didn't in this game a year ago. Makai Wingo, Harold Perkins. Can you put pressure on Jordan Travis? I, LSU is going to be fine in run defense. I don't doubt that at all. you got enough bodies, enough rotation, enough girth, enough want to, to be good against the run. But that ain't the question. Because the guy that beat you last year 
it was Jordan Travis. Because you couldn't get him on the ground and make him uncomfortable. Can you do it on Sunday? If you can't, LSU's going to win this game, regardless of what's happening in the secondary. Your veteran defensive line against their veteran offensive line, even without Mason Smith, is a huge, huge storyline to watch as this game will develop. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.